Today we're going to be building this fun animation using a new free tool for Blender 5.0. And the great thing is with this MoGraph tool, these animations are procedural, meaning you can swap any object you want in there. You can download the free MoGraph array now, a full featured array system designed specifically for motion graphics. And unlike Blender's default array modifier, this tool gives you far more control with MoGraph focused features, including built-in grid arrays, multi-ring radial patterns with extensive controls, curve-driven and mesh-driven arrays, a full collection support with iterate and random modes across all array types, and more. There's a link in the description to download now. So let's get started. But first, I want to mention it's also fully compatible with my new product I just released called the MoGraph Toolbox, which is a complete set of MoGraph tools, fields, and falloffs that make Blender motion graphics fast and approachable. You'll find fields like randomize, image, target, and transform, plus tools like the curve tool with tapered and dashed line support text tools built for fields, shader mixing, and the powerful animator tool. Everything in this scene runs with zero keyframes. Now Blender can do motion graphics, but I've always felt the process was tedious and a bit difficult for beginners. MoGraph Toolbox makes it easy. You simply drag and drop fields and falloffs onto the free array system. MoGraph Toolbox is easy to learn, fully documented, and includes over 20 presets to help you get started creating immediately. It's 25% off right now to celebrate the launch, and I've also partnered with Ducky3D to release a new Mega MoGraph bundle, bundling several of our products together on Superhive now. If you'd like to see a full overview video of the free array tool, I'll link to that in the description below. But let's dive in and create this animation. Let's talk about how first to access the MoGraph array. So you will want to make sure to download the MoGraph array and put it into your asset libraries, which you can find at our edit filegraph asset library. After that, it will appear in your asset browser, or you can add it over here in the modifier stack. First, let's add a cube here, and then we're going to add our array system to that. So if I come up here and I have that installed, I can come to the MoGraph toolbox, come down here to the tools and add the MoGraph array. I want this to be moving back on the Y axis. So if we add a camera, it will work from the front view. So I'm going to take this off of the X here and put this on the Y. I'm going to do something like 1.25, just to offset those back that way. And I'm going to lower the count to something like five. So let's actually work on the animation first. So I'm gonna click up here and I'm gonna drag this to the center here. And I'm gonna switch this over to the graph editor. Next, I'm going to drag this up to the halfway point. In the top here, I'm gonna press zero. And I already have a camera placed in that scene. It's just facing it from the front there. And down here, we're gonna begin working on our animation. Now for the length of my animation, I'm gonna set this to around something like 170. And the entire animation actually only has two animated properties, meaning it's gonna be pretty simple. First, we're going to start with the rotation on our array. So I'm going to grab the array here, come over here, and I'm going to change the rotation style from constant to increment. And what that's going to do is that as I rotate this here, rather than rotating all objects at once, it will set it to an increment. So let's go to the beginning frame. And over here, let's set our rotation back to zero. And I'm going to click here and insert a keyframe. Now I'm going to move forward and we're going to rotate this on an animation here. I'm going to go to frame 48 because since my scene is at 24 frames per second, that will be two seconds. So I'm going to move here and insert negative 16 and insert a keyframe there. And you can see what this is doing is giving us a nice rotation along the line. Now I want this to hold this position momentarily. So I'm actually going to go forward a few more seconds in the timeline here to around frame 96. And I'm going to insert another keyframe there. Then I'm going to go back to the end of the timeline there we're going to set this to zero and reset the entire animation. So let's take a look at what that looks like now. You can see it's beginning the twist, it holds, and then it stops. However, right now it's pretty boring due to the default easing. So let's go ahead and adjust that a bit. So first things first is I don't want it to be completely static here. I almost want it to kind of overshoot. So I'm going to grab this, press the R key, and rotate that down. Come over here, press the R key, and rotate that down. Now when it lands here, we'll see how it kind of still just has a tiny bit of movement before it snaps back that way. However, this is pretty slow. So what we're going to do is we're gonna grab these two handles here, come up here, do individual centers. We're gonna scale there and just crank that easing in. What that's gonna do is give us a soft start, and then it's gonna kind of rapidly fold into place and come back, just like that. And the more you scale it up, the more intense that effect will be. So you can just find something that you like the look of and stop there. So I'm gonna tab back out to object mode here. And next, we're actually going to just animate the Y on our object here. So I'm going to open the transform panel here, 
and I'm gonna come around frame 60. I'm going to insert a single keyframe here on the Y axis there. Now up here, it's difficult to see given the shape of our cube. So let's switch to front view here, tab into edit mode. I'm gonna go into the wireframe here, switch to the vertex mode. I'm gonna grab these bottom and just move this down on the Z key and just give us a little bit of distance there. I'm gonna snap back out to object mode. And now if we play our animation, you can see that it's beginning to create that twirling effect. We just needed to be able to see it behind the cube. Now what we're going to do with this keyframe is we're going to use it to rotate the object around like this as it recloses itself, giving it a bit more of a dynamic look. But first we wanna give it a bit of anticipation, meaning we're going to animate in the opposite direction first. So let's maybe come forward to frame 96 and actually rotate this backwards a bit for a moment. Maybe about negative 10 degrees looks good. We'll right click and insert a single keyframe there. Now what we want to do is rotate it all the way around. So I'm going to snap all the way down the timeline to maybe around here. I'm on frame 144 and I'm going to do 360 degrees and insert a single keyframe. Now I want to view this graph here. So I'm going to open this object transform in the graph editor. If I press the period key, I will zoom in so I can see just my graph here full in frame. Now I'm going to add one more keyframe to this at the end, hit insert single keyframe there. And since we did full 360, it should loop perfectly. But I wanna add a bit of overshoot here just to add a little bit of character. So I'm going to grab this and move this up on the Y axis. So if I hit the G key and press up, that will move that up and overshoot my rotation ever so slightly. We don't wanna to do too much or it could actually create kind of a wonky looking effect. So let's take a look at how this is looking right now. We can see that it spins out and then we spin all the way around as it closes. I think the easing of the animation could be a tiny bit better. So let's grab this animation here. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the other animation and let's grab this frame down here and just scale this out a bit. Grab this one here and just scale this ever so slightly. I'm gonna replay that and we can see that now we're getting a little bit smoother of a rotation as it flies around, just like that. Now we're done animating and now we have a procedural system that we can apply any object to. Let's go ahead and create a simple object that's a little more entertaining than this default cube. So we're going to hide the visibility of the array for a moment there, and we're going to add another cube. Ironic, I know, but we're going to be editing this one. So I'm gonna tab here into edit mode, and let's scale this down on the Y axis. So we'll scale that down so it's a little bit thinner. And then let's scale this up on the Z axis, just like that. Now I'm gonna snap here into the front view and rotate around just a bit, switch over to edge mode. Let's grab these four edges here. Now I'm gonna hit control B, which will allow me to bevel. And what I wanna do is create kind of a rounded card. So I'm just gonna rotate this up just like that. And now we have a little rounded cube that we can use. So let's add a bevel modifier here. And I'm gonna set this to 0.05, create a smaller bevel and add one more segment. I'm gonna right click, shade auto smooth. And this still looks a bit low poly, so we're going to add a subdivision surface there as well. And now we have a base object we can use in our array system, just like the opening example. So let's do a little bit of organization here. Let's create a new system and call this array tutorial. We're going to call the cube we have, turn this back on. We're going to call this array. Then let's move this into the scene there. And then I'm going to grab the cube we just created and let's call this card.000. And in here, we'll put array objects and we'll drag the card in there. Now we can grab our array system. Currently, we're set to instance the self, which means it's just going to instance whatever it's applied to. If I set it to object here, you'll see it'll disappear. But if I grab this card, you'll see how it immediately replaces it with the card. Let's take a look at how that animation is already working now on the card, just like that. Perfect. Because this is fully procedural, we can adjust everything. For example, I think it might be nice if the cards were a little bit further apart. So I'm gonna do 1.5 and you can see how everything is still working in our animation. Great, let's add some materials to these and make them look a bit more interesting. I'm gonna switch my top here to render view. Now I have a small studio HDRI here. I just downloaded this from HDRI Haven and let's begin adding materials to our object. Now I don't want this card here interrupting my array. So what I'm actually going to do is grab the array here and press forward slash. If I press zero, I'll go back to my camera and the only thing I'm seeing here in my scene is the array whereas everywhere else I can see the card here is still visible. So with that card selected, I am going to add a material here. Let's call this card mat.000. I'm gonna switch this to render view up here. 
come down here, use a shader editor here, and let's create kind of a frosted glass look. So we'll turn the transmission all the way up, and you can see that we are getting some see-through effect here, but because our roughness is high, it's not passing through entirely. I would like a little bit of roughness. I'm gonna grab the glass here, turn this up to just a very light gray, and then let's lower the roughness. I'm gonna do something like 0.35. I want it to almost have this frosted glass look. And this is cool looking, but I'd actually like to do some other colors on the object. So let's look at how we can do that. If we grab our array system here, we are currently set to object. However, if we come over here to collection, we can choose the collection we created, which is array objects. So I'm going to grab that array objects. Now, if you notice that the animation breaks, that's because when we were using self and object, we were using the relative, where it chooses the size of the object. Since a collection has a variety of objects potentially, relative is not an option. So instead we just go by offset or length. I'm going to go by length and I'm going to switch the X distance to zero. And then I'm just going to crank up the Y distance here until everything's just spread out ever so slightly. And now that we're using the collection here, what we can do is duplicate this card a couple times and apply material to each one as we see fit. So I'm going to duplicate there and let's do four duplications so that we have five objects. Let's grab to card one, click here and create a new color. I'm going to do this peachy color. Here's the hex code I'm using if you'd like to copy it. And I'm going to leave the transmission up, but I'm actually going to turn the roughness up on this one and create a nearly opaque type of glass. So on this next one here, let's click new so that we're card mat two. I'm again going to turn the roughness up here. I'm going to enter this hex code value that I've already decided, which gives me kind of a darker maroon look. Coming down to card three, I'll create a new material. And again, I'm just going to repeat that process. I will also add on card four here. And this one, I'm going to do a bit of a brighter red since it's in the back, I kind of want it to pop more. And again, I'm going to crank that roughness up there. And now that we have this as a collection, we have it currently going as iterate. What this means is that it's going to go from the top to the bottom. Let's turn this collection off here so it's not interrupting our scene. I'm gonna switch into render mode here. You can see here that it's going down the list of zero, one, two, three, four in the order that we did the materials. We also have the option here for random. If I click there, it will randomly choose between all the instances and I can go here until I find something that I like. I'm going to leave mine on iterate for now. I'm just going to grab the array here and I'm going to move this up on the Z axis ever so slightly. And I'm just going to add a simple background behind this. Just going to add a plane here, rotate it 90 degrees, move it back on the Z axis pretty far away. I don't really want a drop shadow on it. And then I'm just going to scale this up until it becomes visible in the background here. Now, if you remember, we did forward slash, so we need to do that again so that it's visible. So if I press forward slash, I can now see my other objects. I'm just gonna do this here and let's scale this out on the X. I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. I'm gonna show you a cool trick about how to easily add gradients to a background. And what I can do is add a gradient texture here. If I take a look at that, you see it's going from the left to the right. So if I have this and you have Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which is packaged for free, and I hit Control T, it can be difficult messing with these controls sometimes. So what I just prefer to do is add a separate X, Y, and Z. And then I can just change the direction there. So in this case, it's Z up, so we'll grab the Z. And now it's going from the top to the bottom. Now if I add a color ramp here, what I can do is kind of pick some warm background colors that matches the front colors there. We'll plug this into our base color. And just like that, we have a nice background that we can easily adjust. I'm gonna switch this to HCV add a bit more warmth to this here. And you can see how nice that's looking. Now I've already shown that the system's procedural, but the cool thing is that you can really just quickly insert any other object. For example, here you can see I have kind of a blender fuel joke can, just, you know, fuel the cube, but it's easy just to then insert any object in here and reuse these animations, which is part of what makes the presets we include in the full package so powerful, is you can just drag and drop linear twirl arrays like this, and other presets we have, and just adjust them to meet your needs. Again, that product will be linked in the description, and thank you for watching. Now don't forget to download the free MoGraph array tool in the description below, and check out the full MoGraph toolbox. Now, I just want to say that we spent a ton of time on this product and the array tool specifically. I hope you find it useful, and we'd love to hear your feedback and how we can improve it.